Hello and welcome to video lecture series in sociology. Today we are going to discuss from your textbook Social Change and Development in India chapter 3 titled as The Story of Indian Democracy. This chapter is broadly divided into four parts. In the previous lecture we discussed about meaning, features and origin of democracy in modern societies. In this lecture we will discuss about constitution of India, its core values and making of the constitution. So far we have learnt about the distinct ways and lasting consequences of the colonial experience. These structural and cultural transformations brought by the British had been significant in defining nature of reality in contemporary India. It is in this context today we will discuss the story of Indian democracy. There are many accounts indicating the fact that democratic values and institutions have always existed in India in some form or the other. But the story about modern Indian democracy begins with the colonial era. As we have already discussed earlier that to facilitate smooth functioning of its rule, the British introduced many structural and institutional changes. Some of these changes were intended, but some of them were unintended consequences. For example, Britishers introduced English education to create a class of Indians who would help them in managing their empire. As a result, although a western educated sections of Indians did emerge, but instead of aiding the British rule, they used western liberal ideas of democracy, social justice and nationalism to challenge the colonial rule itself. As done by the social reformers of early 20th century, the western educated section of Indians questioned, reinterpreted and combined both modern and traditional ideas. They saw a sharp contrast between the undemocratic and discriminatory administrative practices of British colonialism on the one hand and the vision of freedom, equality and liberty which western theories of democracy espoused on the other. The contradiction became more complex and deep when they attempted to visualize and apply notion of equality and liberty in Indian society. Why did this complexity grow? This complexity or contradiction grew because the reformers and nationalists were trying to lay a new foundation for a society as summarized by French Revolution in three words, fraternity, liberty and equality. However, given the nature and intensity of social discrimination and poverty in India, there was a deeper questioning of the ideals and meaning of democracy. Which means, is democracy just about political freedom? Or is it also about economic freedom and social justice? Is it also about equal rights of all irrespective of caste, creed, race and gender or religion? And if that is the case, then how such equality can be realized in an unequal society like India? Many of these issues were thought of much before India became free. Even during the freedom struggle, a vision of what Indian democracy should look like emerged. In 1928, Motilal Nehru and eight other Congress leaders drafted a constitution for India. In 1931, the resolution at the Karachi session of the Indian National Congress dwelt on how constitution of independent India should look like. The Karachi resolution reflects a vision of democracy that meant not just formal holding of elections, but a substantive reworking of Indian social structure itself in order to have a genuine democratic society. The Karachi resolution clearly spells out the vision of democracy that the nationalist movement and the leaders in India had. It articulates the values that were further given full expression in the constitution of independent India. In Karachi Congress resolution of 1931, it was decided what Swaraj will include. This means that the Swaraj as conceived by the Congress should include real social and economic freedom of the masses. The Congress declared that no constitution will be acceptable to it unless it provides or enables the Swaraj government to provide certain fundamental rights, equality and freedom to all. Some of the prominent ideals to be included were freedom of expression, freedom of movement, freedom of religion, protection of all cultures, language, rights of minorities and women. It demanded equality of 
all before law. It talked about no discrimination in employment and acquiring property. It demanded universal adult suffrage. And it also demanded to abolish capital punishment, titles and salt tax and religious neutrality of the state. It was envisaged that the constitution will guarantee freedom, equality and liberty. We hear about the concept of constitution many a times. But what is constitution or what do we mean by it? Constitution is the document that constitutes a nation's tenets. The constitution is a basic norm from which all other rules and authorities flow. The constitution of India is India's basic norm. The preamble of the constitution of India after independence seeks to ensure not just political justice but also social and economic justice. Here equality is not just about equal political rights but also about status and opportunities. It would be appropriate here to discuss or know the meaning of preamble as well. Preamble is a preface to the constitution. It describes the philosophy of the constitution. Preamble is the introductory part of the constitution that sets out in detail the underlying facts and assumptions and explains its intent and objectives. It embodies the most important values and objectives of our constitution. It is the soul and spirit of the constitution. It briefly states what our political leaders, nationalists and makers of constitution wanted India to be. Preamble states the ideals and goals of the constitution. Its main aim is to clarify the meaning and purpose of the operative part of the text in case of any ambiguity or dispute. The preamble of constitution of India starts with the words, we the people of India. These words have immense constitutional and political significance. They mean that the people are the source of this constitution. It is the people of India who are makers or writers or framers of the constitution. It is also implied that there is popular sovereignty in India. Our preamble states that we resolve to secure to all citizens justice, social, economic and political, liberty of thought, expression, belief, faith and worship, equality of status and opportunity and promote it among all and fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and unity and integrity of the nation. Our constitution emerged from intense and open discussions within the constituent assembly. The constituent assembly of India was elected to write constitution of India and it served as first parliament of the independent India. The constituent assembly of India was set up as a result of negotiations between the Indian leaders and members of the British cabinet mission. The popular demand in 1939 for a constituent assembly after several ups and downs was conceded by imperialist Britain in 1945. In July 1946, the elections were held. The constituent assembly was elected indirectly by the members of provincial legislative assembly. In August 1946, the Indian National Congress expert committee moved a resolution in the constituent assembly. This resolution contained the declaration that India shall be a republic where the declared social, economic and political justice will be guaranteed to all the people in India. Right from the beginning, the vision or ideological content, the process or procedure by which it was formed was democratic. There are two important concepts that you come across here. One is democracy and the other one is the republic. What do we mean by these two concepts? Democracy and Republic are often taken as one and the same thing, but there are fundamental differences between the concepts. While in both the cases, the government is elected by the people, in democracy, the majority rules according to their own whims, while in a republic, the government rules according to law. This law is framed in the constitution to limit the power of the government and ensure rights and protection to minorities and individuals. Thus, India was declared as a republic and the government will be chosen or formed through democratic procedures. On the matters of social justice, there were lively debates in the constituent assembly on whether government functions should be prescribed and the state should be bound down to them. The issues debated in the constituent assembly range from right to employment, 
to social security, land reforms to property rights and to the organization of panchayats. The debates of the constant assembly are interesting and reveal different concerns being expressed and debated by political leaders. The constant assembly was aware of the complexity and plurality in Indian society and they were intent and bent upon securing social justice as a guarantee to all the citizens. Let us look at some of the significant issues taken up by the constant assembly. To begin with, K.T. Shah said the right to useful employment could and should be made as real by a categoric obligation on part of the state to provide useful work to every citizen who was able and qualified to do the work. Next, keeping pace with the forces of change on land reform, Nehru said that the social forces were such that law could not stand in the way of reform. Nehru said if law and parliaments do not fit themselves into the changing picture, they cannot control the changing situation. On the protection of tribal people and their interest, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru stated that it is our intention and fixed desire to help them as much and in as efficient ways as possible to protect them from their possibly rapacious neighbor and help them to advance. One important issue was raised by Bishwanath Das from Orissa. He said that, I think it is the primary duty of government to remove hunger and render social justice to every citizen and to secure social security. Hitting the crux, he said, the masses do not find any hope that the union constitution will ensure them freedom from hunger, secure them social justice or ensure them a minimum standard of living and public health. The chairman of the drafting committee of the constitution, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar said that the draft constitution as framed only provides a machinery for the government of the country. It is not a contrivance to install any particular party or people in power as it has done in some countries. Who should be in the power is left to be determined by the people in a democracy if the nation has to satisfy the test of democracy. But whosoever captures the power will not be free to do what he or she likes within it. In the exercise of it, he will have to respect these instruments and instructions which are called as directive principles. The person in power cannot ignore these directive principles. He may not have to answer for their breach in a court of law, but he will certainly have to answer for them before the electorate at the next election. What great value these directive principles possess will be realized only when the forces of right contrivance to capture power. These parts of the debate demonstrate that how intense was the discussion for ensuring social justice to all in India. Still, Constitution is not just a ready referencer of do's and don'ts for social justice. It has the potential for meaning of social justice to be extended and interpreted. For example, social movements in the recent years have aided the courts and the authorities to interpret the contents of rights and principles as per the contemporary understanding of social justice. These laws are made and implemented by the authorities specified by the constitution. A hierarchy of courts, which two are authorities created by the constitution of India, interpret the laws when there is a dispute. The Supreme Court of India is the highest court and the ultimate interpreter of the constitution. Law and courts are the site where competing views are debated. The constitution remains a means to channelize and civilize political power towards social welfare of all. To conclude, let us summarize what we discussed in this lecture. We began our discussion by understanding introduction of democracy in India and the history of making of constitution of India. Given the kind of social inequality and hierarchy existing, drafting of constitution was a difficult task and a challenge. This task was taken up by the constituent assembly. In this context, we discussed about when, how and why the constituent assembly was formed. What were its central concerns? and discussed some of the debates of the constituent assembly that indicated the concern for social justice. In the next part of this lecture, we will discuss about Panchayati Raj institutions that is practicing democracy at the grassroots level. Till then, you can enjoy reading this chapter.